So much has happened since I last saw you. I have relied on Rotten Tomato scores to a fault. And I'm guilty of not watching a movie if I see one of these. Up until just recently, I would judge any movie with a score lower than 79% as something that was just not worth my time. However, I've made a huge mistake. Hello, I am the Lazy Critic and I am outraged to have seen such a low score listed on Rotten Tomatoes under The Karate Kid Part 2. The audacity of such a beautiful film to have received such a low score is quite honestly a bit rude. How dare you all conspire against me? How dare you? I have a lot of opinions and I know my taste is different from others, but I have a hard time wrapping my mind around such an awful score being given to such a wonderful movie. Please be warned, I will be going into some spoilers for both The Karate Kid Part 1 and 2, but I promise Cobra Kai will be untouched, especially because that show deserves its own video video essay showcasing its own glory. You're not gonna be able to fix that. How'd you do that? All right, I just, I refuse to believe that me and all these critics saw the same movie. An air of aimless desperation hangs over part two. False. Somehow the magic of the first movie is just gone. False. Like countless sequels, The Karate Kid Part 2 tries upping the stakes without straying too far from formula and suffering diminishing returns as a result. False, false, false! Please do not listen to these critics as everyone needs to give it a chance, because to be honest, I have my own opinions about The Karate Kid Part 1 and how boring I found Daniel's character. I can only pick out a handful of scenes that I really like, and they all had Pat Mortia in common. The Karate Kid? is about Kazuki Miyagi, an immigrant who fought against his own people in World War II while his wife lost a child in an internment camp. Noriyuki Morita was nominated for an Academy Award for his performance. Ralph Macchio? showed up. Getting a chance to focus on someone other than Daniel is why The Karate Kid Part 2 is the real winner. It tells an epic tale of love and war while focusing on Mr. Miyagi, who gives so much warmth to the entire storyline. Daniel may be in this movie, but the true star is finally getting his time to shine. Don't be like me, judging this movie based around its Rotten Tomato score, because the score itself is rotten. The Karate Kid Part 2 is wildly entertaining, with great fights scenes and really interesting storylines that add a whole lot of depth to each character while giving much needed backstory of Mr. Miyagi's life before he ever really crossed paths with Daniel. You know, you never told me, why'd you ever leave Okinawa in the first place? Fall in love with girl. So why, why'd you leave? It was arranged by her parents. She married someone else. All right, now, I'll admit, I didn't come to this conclusion on my own after having rolled my eyes at my man for the hundredth time, annoyed that yet again I have to hear another desperate plea to give The Karate Kid Part 2 a chance. I finally gave in because I actually really liked Cobra Kai, and according to him, it was going to enhance my viewing of Season 3 by giving it a watch. And to be honest, it very much did that. I am so thankful that I was forced to watch this, learning all about Mr. Miyagi, his family, his love life, just an overall deep dive on an incredibly complex character. What about you, hero? You have enough? There's only so much that can happen in a tournament setting. There might have been scenes here and there where the stakes felt high, but it didn't have the charm that was found in The Karate Kid Part 2. Yeah, sure, it's cool that we see Daniel learn a crane kick and use it on Johnny to win the fight, but the drum technique? That was built into the storyline so much better than the crane kick ever was. First, we are introduced to it by Mr. Miyagi, acting like a father, passing along a technique his own father showed him. In just one scene, so much history has been established. Daniel-san, you all right? Yeah, I'm sorry, that was pretty stupid. Miyagi say that to father when same thing happened. Father agree he was stupid. Father was right. Mr. Miyagi's father, him dating Yuki, and even learning about how he was just as stupid as Daniel. It puts a very much needed human aspect on this character. <laughs> Looks like a bond dance. Oh, 
Well, then I must be doing something wrong. Then we are reintroduced to the drum technique when Daniel starts flirting with Kumiko, using the technique to learn a traditional dance. And it reestablishes that this is something that's going to be important later on. And then it's used to save Daniel and Kumiko. How did this not give all these negative critics the absolute chills? Life or death, man! If you have never seen part two, please go give it a chance. Whether you're a fan of the franchise or not, it's worth a viewing. How you know where to find me? I've known for many years. The only negative I can give this movie is the negative that I can place on any American movie released in the past where foreigners are forced to speak broken English even when their characters are talking to each other. Come on guys, they would not have been speaking to each other in English. It's more of a fault placed on the time period the movie was made from rather than on the movie itself. My lazy yet humble consensus is that this is a lovely film. Thank you for hearing me out. I'm the Lazy Critic and I hope you have a wonderful day.